Louise and I write the blog Sagittarius Dolly. I recently took part in the first ever internet-wide collaboration that was created by the YouTube channel Delightful that was called the Tropical Doll 2019 Collaboration. The theme of this collaboration was tropical, of course. The rules were pretty simple and straightforward, and it basically entailed customizing a doll or toy to reflect the tropical theme of this collaboration. I thought it would be a fun summer activity to do, so I took part in it. I submitted a, fo a photo of my customized doll just a few hours before the, the deadline. I later learned that my submission was among 4,000 submissions. Nevertheless, it was pretty cool seeing my photo of my newly customized doll among the other submissions in the delightful video, and I was excited the first time I, I saw it being shown in that video. Here is the story behind my own tropical doll submission. After thinking through a few ideas, I thought about doing a mermaid with a pink flamingo motif that would somehow be reflected in her tail. Of course, how she would look would definitely depend on what I would find in the local stores. I originally didn't think about things like skin tone or hair color or anything beyond having a mermaid tail that would somehow incorporate pink flamingos. Both mermaids and pink flamingos definitely reflect the tropical theme of this collaboration. I also thought that incorporating flamingos would turn my project into some fun, light-hearted kish. It's a time of the year where one can easily find in stores not only the classic pink flamingo lawn ornaments that have been around since the end of World War II, but also pink flamingo drinking glasses, pink flamingo plates, strings of pink flamingo outdoor lights, etc. I didn't think about what doll I wanted to use other than a Barbie or a similar fashion doll that would be priced relatively cheap, meaning $10 or less. I originally had no preference of skin tone. Around the same time that I decided to take part in its collaboration, there was this idiotic controversy when the internet went in an uproar after Disney announced that for the role of Ariel in its live-action remake of The Little Mermaid, it was going to cast an African-American singer in a role where the original animation had depicted Ariel as a Caucasian red-headed woman with a green fishtail. I shook my head as I read my fellow white people typing messages like, Ariel is white and she should only be played by whites. And black people can't be mermaids because black mermaids don't exist. And OMFG, casting a black person as Ariel would be like casting a white person as Oprah Winfrey in a movie about her life. So I went from not caring about the skin color of this pink flamingo mermaid to being adamant that she would have brown skin mainly to make an in-your-face statement to all those idiots who are adamant that there can never be black mermaids. I mean, never mind the fact that mermaids are fantasy creatures to begin with. So I, I went to this local store called Dollar City, which was so named because it originally opened as a store where everything cost 99 cents or less. Although in recent years, they started coming, bringing in more items that they sell for over a dollar, but the name stuck. But to be honest, I've never seen anything in that store sold for anything lower than five bucks. I looked through the store at the cheap children's toy area until I found this generic fashion doll sold under the name Sweet Girl, where she is the same size as Barbie and her face resembles Barbie's, but this doll only costs $2.99. She has brown skin with blue eyes, and she w wore a yellow dress that looked so appealing that I briefly considered keeping it to use on other Barbies and or other 1-6 scale dolls in future projects. I started work on the doll soon after I, rem I removed her from the box. When I removed the doll from the box, I found that the yellow dress felt like it was made from tissue paper. What's more, this dress wasn't easy, easily removable. There were no snaps or buttons or even Velcro. It was like the dress was sewn permanently on the doll at the factory. Since the dress was made so cheaply, there was no way I could even think of removing the dress without destroying it. So I took a pair of scissors and I cut it off. And once I cut the dress off the doll, I had to throw it in the trash, which wasn't a big loss because, like I said earlier, the dress felt like it was made from tissue paper. Once I stripped her naked, I found that there was this black stamp on one of her front thighs 
that clearly clearly marked the doll's item number, manufacturing batch, and the fact that this doll was manufactured in Shantou, China in October 2016 and distributed by AAI of Piscataway, New Jersey. I suppose that's another reason why this doll only cost $2.99. I also felt this doll and her vinyl felt more squishy and less sturdy than Barbie's, which is probably why this doll was sold so cheaply. The doll originally came with her hair in an updo ponytail. I originally thought about taking down her hair and either do a full dye or a partial dye in pink using acrylic paint. But when I took down her hair, I found that there was a reason why she wore her hair in that style. Her entire head wasn't covered with hair. She had so little hair that her bald spot was large and noticeable. I might have kept her original hair as is and just paint the ponytail part of it pink. If it weren't for the fact that I felt that her updo hairstyle was pretty mediocre due to the fact that she had so little hair. So I decided to try something alternative and cut off what little doll hair she actually had. It wasn't too hard to cut off. Much of her hair fell out at the root the minute I cut it, which was probably another reason why this doll only cost $2.99. After I managed to cut off what little hair she had, I noticed that this newly bought doll reminded me of one of those female Wakanda warriors from the Black Panther movie. I briefly thought about keeping her bald, which would have been a radical design idea when it comes to mermaids. Because, you know, mermaids are usually depicted as having long, flowing hair. But then I saw the back of her head and realized that it just wouldn't be feasible. I mean, to be blunt, the back of the head looked like a, the tip of a man's penis. I mean, I'm sorry for saying that, but it really does. But that wasn't the only strangely phallic part of that doll. There were times when I removed her hair head so I could completely remove the hair from the inside using tweezers. When I removed her head, I found that, well, there was something phallic about her head joint that gave new meaning to the word dickhead. I mean, I guess there's another reason why this doll was priced so cheaply. <laughs> I shopped around at the various arts and crafts stores until I found this pretty cool pink flamingo fabric at Joanne's Fabrics and Crafts. I kind of liked it because it, it kind of reminded me of, of the, the kishy artwork from the late 50s that were done in like a variety of pastel colors and, you know, it was like, you know, simple design. And also the pattern was pretty small enough that it could easily be scaled for a 1 6 doll like the one I was using. I did a quick web search on how to make a mermaid tail, tail for a doll and I found this YouTube tutorial by My Froggy Stuff which I found to be helpful. I have the link on the screen below but I'll definitely put the link in the description because it is a very useful tutorial. Anyway, so I made the tail and I also sewed the top for where I used fabric that I found on the remnants table at Joann's that was priced on sale. I also made the top using the same My Froggy Stuff tutorial that I mentioned earlier. For the hair, I decided to have a hair color scheme that would match the colors of her tail. I ended up buying yarn that was on sale from both Joann's and Michael's Arts and Crafts. And they were both pretty close to the tail colors. I used this tutorial that was posted on Hannah plus Laura's YouTube channel on how to make a doll wig using yarn. And once again, I put the link below, but I will also put the direct link in the, co in the uh, description so you can watch the video in its entirety. The only modifications I made to the uh, tutorial were I glued the yarn directly on the doll's head instead of using a baby sock because I intended her hair to be permanent. And I used E6000 glue instead of a hot glue gun. That's because the quality of the vinyl felt so thin compared to Barbie and the other dolls her size that I was literally afraid of burning a hole in her head had, in the vinyl had I used the hot glue gun. Anyway, so I surrounded her head with yarn until I covered her head completely. I found two pink flamingo shaped buttons at Joann's that I decided to use as doll barrettes. I attached them to the doll's hair using pipe cleaners. I was really happy with how my kishy pink flamingo mermaid of color was do turning out. I decided to add a pink flamingo buddy to create sort of a picture of a pink flamingo mermaid with her pink flamingo bird companion. I turned to Tide, which is the company that was responsible for the, remember the Beanie Baby um, craze of the 90s? That, you know, was where Beanie Babies were sold for hundreds of dollars and then the market crashed. Anyway, Ty is, is still around, and they, they're still releasing new animals on their various product lines. 
And throughout the summer, on the various the shelves in the various stores, you know, I saw Thai pink flamingo stuffed animals. And I thought, you know, buying one of them would be perfect because it was, was about, you know, would be reasonably scaled compared to the doll. Anyway, when it came time to buying the pink flamingo, I saw that the stores got a new line of Thai products called Flippables, which is basically have reversible glitter where, you know, the you know, the glitter shows one color or the other depending on how you flip the glitter sequence. And they had a flippable version of the pink flamingo where the colors alternate between pink and like a silver color. But they didn't have the original plush tie that I was that I personally would have preferred. But then the deadline was coming and I need to take pictures soon. So I broke down and bought the uh, tie flippable. So I said, okay, it'll have to do. But then a few days later, after I bought that flamingo, I went back to Joanne's to buy a few more things, finish my project. And I saw that there was one remaining plush pink flamingo that was not a flippable. It was part of the regular Thai Beanie Booze line, which has, you know, big eyes and, you know, the regular plush material. And that was the one I won in the first place. So then I came up with an idea of, of you know, maybe the, the mermaid being flanked by two pink flamingos. And, you know, one would be the flippables and one would be the Beanie Booze. So I, I bought the Thai Beanie Booze as well. And, you know, it wasn't so bad. And, you know, so I, so she now has two companions instead of the one I originally planned. But that was no big deal. I had a few other ideas regarding my submission that I ended up, ended up not using due to, mainly to the looming deadline. I mean, one example was I had an idea of having a small cutout printed on cardstock showing the late actor Divine in John Waters' cult classic Pink Flamingos. You know, get get that idea? I also wanted to shoot on location at a beach near a shoreline since mermaids water and beaches go together and right now i mean going to a natural beach resort like ocean city maryland is completely out of the question for me due mainly to a tight budget and i'm also working a day job and i don't really have the time you know the time needed to, to make such a trip and also ocean city is located like like about four hours away from where i live which is outside of washington dc so anyway, I originally planned on going to some of the closer beaches that face the Chesapeake Bay, like Sandy Point State Park, North Beach, or Chesapeake Beach. Those beaches would have been easier for me to get to, you know, with no problem at all. But then something happened in the news that made me consider another option. Basically, Donald Trump, you know, our current president, Donald J. Trump, issued a series of tweets where he pretty much you know, he not only attacked Rep Representative Elijah Cummings, but he also attacked the city of Baltimore as well, where he said his Baltimore district is far worse and more dangerous. His district is considered the worst in the USA and stuff like that. I mean, really insulting stuff. And I think the worst was when he said no human being will want to live there. That, you know, that kind of hit pretty hard because I was born in Baltimore and my family has lived in that in the Baltimore area for generations. So I was born in Baltimore City. I lived there until I was five years old. And my family, until when my family moved to Glen Burnie, which is located just south of Baltimore. And even though I now live closer to Washington, D.C., you know, I, I still have, you know, I, I, I still have a bit of affection for, for Baltimore. I mean, you know, it's because it was my birthplace and all that. So, yeah, I was kind of, so, yeah, I, I was pretty much pissed off about what he tweeted and stuff. So just as I made a black mermaid in an effort to outrage all those white folks screaming, black people can't be mermaids, I decided that my photo shoot would take place in Baltimore in order to outrage Donald Trump and all of his Make America Great Mega followers. After all, the city is located among, along a major body of water, and filmmaker John Waters did his cult classic Pink Flamingos on location in Baltimore. So the only challenge was finding something that's a beach since one can only swim in a local community pool and not in the Inner Harbor or the Patasco River. In the meantime, I'd added a few additional elements that made my upcoming submission more Baltimore focused. And one evening I saw on sale at Michael's, there was a sale on these small pink flamingo shaped birthday candles for only $1 each. And I thought they were perfect for my project. The only problem was that the vast majority of those candles had snapped necks. So I ended up buying the one last remaining candle that was still intact. And then Michael's had like these really small gift bags. I mean, they were like perfectly scaled for a doll. So I bought a pack of six of them for a dollar. And I also grabbed a Sharpie where I wrote the hashtag, we are Baltimore. That was the, uh, that would reflect the fact that 
that particular hashtag went viral on Twitter soon after Donald Trump made those horrible, disgusting tweets about the city. Finally, there was the issue of looking for a place in Baltimore that could possibly pass as a beach. I soon learned that there is a place located near Fells Point known as the Sandlot that is only open during the summer months. The Sandlot is not only an outdoor bar and restaurant, but it has a huge sandy area where one can play games like volleyball and bossy ball. And it has, has swings where people of all ages can swing on. And there are places where one can sit facing the Patasco River, wind his way to the Inner Harbor. I find, I, I, it was like Eureka, it was a Eureka moment because I found that perfect spot for my photo shoot. The challenge I had throughout the entire created, creation process with, from the beginning to end was that I had a day job. So I had to limit everything to either early in the morning before work, after work, and the weekends. I was glad that the days are currently longer this time of the year so I could get more of the, of the, photo, of the, work, the photography work done. A few days before my Saturday trip to Baltimore, I decided to do a few test shoots closer to my home. I wanted to practice for my desired shoot, and I also wanted a backup in case for some reason, such as car trouble or serious inclement weather, I had to cancel going to Baltimore at the last minute. So I initially went to Greenbelt Lake, which is located in Greenbelt, Maryland, and it's the closest to my home, you know, it's, and I did a test shoot there. While I, I, I initially liked the setup of my elements, what I didn't like was the fact that I couldn't get close enough to the lake without risking falling in or having my dial fall in because of the way that the shores slope down severely. In many areas, the trees and other foliage tend to get in the way of getting a shot that could encompass both the water, the dolls, and the other props. Even though I settled for putting everything on a rock, you can barely see the water in the background. I thought about the New Carrollton Library in New Carrollton, Maryland. That's because last year that library underwent extensive renovations and it reopened to the public with high praise recorded in the local media. The architect decided to, to do an aquatic themed design and it's reflected all over the library. I thought it would be cool to do a shoot there even if everything would be indoors instead of being on location at a beach. So I, I took a few shots of my doll and props near this wall that had a giant picture of a fish and I took that shot at the same setup from different angles. The blue carpeting had this pattern that suggested ocean waves. So I shot my mermaid and her friends at an angle that also showed the ca carpet with the waves. The last local shoot I did before I went to Baltimore was at Lake Artemisia, which is located in College Park, Maryland, just a few miles from the camp University of Maryland campus. I went after work when it was still twilight. I managed to shoot this photo with the lake clearly in the background. I have to admit that had I not been able to go to Baltimore, I would have submitted this picture instead because I liked the way everything was composed. Here's, I'm going to let you in one little secret. I placed the items on top of the lid of a tall, closed trash can. you got to admit, if I hadn't told you this, you would not suspect in the least bit. <laughs> anyway, the deadline was fast approaching and it got to a point where if I didn't go to Baltimore soon, I would have had to choose one of my alternate photographs to submit. So I went up to Baltimore and I took the light rail from North Linthicum into the city and I also took the, the Charm City Circulator until I got close to the location where the sandlot is. So I was walking towards the area where the sandlot was located. I found an empty dock that I thought would make a great alternative shot. So I pulled out my doll and her props only to discover to my horror that my cheap $1 pink flamingo candle has snapped its neck. You know, it happened in transit. So I ended up having to jettison that candle entirely and go with everything else. So that's what I did when I made my first shot in Baltimore. I eventually made it to the sandlot. And so I took, you know, so I pulled out, you know, the doll, her two flamingo friends and the bag that said that, that had the hashtag, we are Baltimore. And I saw a place, you know, around the, the beach area and I, you know, took the doll from various angles and I also shot her like at various places along that beach. So, you know, I, I just did a bunch of shots. At one point, I even took a close up shot of the mermaid and their flamingo friends with the Domino Sugar Factory clearly in the background. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Baltimore, 
The Domino Sugar Factory is part of the iconic landscape of the Baltimore Inner Harbor, along with the Bromo Seltzer Tower and the National Aquarium. The only major flaw with that close-up shot was that you couldn't see her mermaid tail, so you wouldn't know that she was a mermaid from this angle. So I, you know, moved the camera just a few inches away, and I felt like I got the perfect shot with a body of water that's clearly visible, the beach, the Domino Sugar Factory, factory in the background and the bag with the we are baltimore clearly visible i mean yeah i was sad that my flamingo candle snapped at the last minute but otherwise it was you know everything you know worked out perfectly after i shot this photo i really fell in love with the shot but i decided to sleep on it you know to make sure that this was a photo i really wanted to submit so the next morning, I looked at the photo and I saw that, you know, the only flaw I could really notice was that the photo itself had so, a sort of a bluish tint to it. And I really wanted something that seemed warmer, that would better reflect the tropical theme of the collaboration. So this is where a few months ago, I had a friend of mine urge me to download this app on my smartphone called Snapseed. It was, you know, it's an it's a photo editing app that was developed by Google, and it's a way of people, you know, for people to edit their photos, you know, using effects that one would normally find find in a Adobe Photoshop. Except, you know, it's also for people who don't have extensive training in Photoshop, which, as you know, some of you may know, it has an extremely st steep learning curve. You know, this is for someone who you know can just turn out a professional looking picture, you know, pretty quickly just by pressing a few buttons on or on the screen. So I brought the photo into Snapseed and I managed to add some warm highlights to the picture. And I also added my Instagram and Twitter accounts on the photo. Once I was satisfied with the results, I emailed it to the, uh, the light bulb people so they would appear in the video. So that's how I, you know, made this doll. And, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed taking part in the collaboration. I had fun making the doll, you know, and I was glad I did what I did. And it was, it was a real thrill, you know, seeing my work appearing in someone else's video. That's it for now. If you enjoy watching this video, feel free to like, comment, and share this video. If you want to see more videos from me on this channel, hit the subscribe button. Also, check out my blog, Sagittarius Dolly, at sagittariusdolly.wordpress.com. Goodbye for now and live creatively.